So just giving you an overview of the UK market, I just want to give you a rough background to myself. I sit in the London desk and actually head up a lot of the US, Canadian, and South American investment into the UK and European markets. So there's one thing I would ask you all to remember is that currently in the UK in 2012, there was 13 and a half billion of the total worldwide deals of 177 billion done in the UK alone. I plan to run through an overview of the offices, the retail, the residential in the UK, also in the UK regions, and I have a very high level in relation to the alternative assets. In London, over the last two, three years, there has been a general reduction in the supply from the market average of about 17 million square feet. This is a reduction as a result of actually the reduction in the construction financing over the last couple of years, and also due to the rental market being slightly depressed over the number of years. We do forecast that in 2013 and in 2014, there will be a significant increase in this due to a large number of very large schemes that are coming on board in these two coming years. Take, take up, as you see, is slightly down from the peak of 2010, and 2011 were quite generally stagnant years. But in 2013, there has been quite a significant increase in this, just in Q and alone. The result of this has been in relation to the TMT, the technology, media, and telecoms communications companies. They are significantly growing over the last two, three years, and we're seeing some very large take up in this. In particular, Google, who took 800,000 square feet over the last coming months, and also in relation to Amazon, that took another 200 over the last two, three months. In relation to the current supply and vacancy rates, in this year, 2013, in city centre, there's a current vacancy rate of about 9%. In the West End, that's much lower, at 3.9%. This vacancy in the West End is a result of a number of what I call overseas international buyers coming in and buying these buildings and converting them into residential use. In the London city, there has been, I suppose, a slight pickup in relation to certain demand aspects, and that is bringing our overall supply down to the 9% levels. With this large supply that is coming online over the next two, three years, we don't think that there is going to be an increase in vacancy. If anything, the vacancy levels will stay the same as a result of the significant prelets that are already in place in these large skyscrapers that are being built. Moving into the actual city development pipeline, as you can see, there is a significant amount of kit coming in 2013 and 2014. These are 60 Hoburn, 60 Bevis Marks, Finsbury Square, the Shard, the Place. They are quite large, iconic buildings, about to 590, 425,000 square feet. But I would like to bring to your attention that the Place in particular, BNP, we're working on this. We have now signed a lease for the entire building on that. The Shard is marking up very, very well, in addition to 60 Hoburn and 60 Bevis. As I mentioned, with the Google taking 800 and Amazon taking 210, there is significant demand for these type of areas from the TMT media sectors. Even moving into the 2014 completions, in particular 20 Fenchurch Street and 122 Leadenhall, uh, with over one year to completion, these buildings are already over 50% pre-let. Moving over towards the West End, as you can see, there's a significant supply coming aboard in 2013, but even reduced in 2014. In 2013, there'd be about 1.6 million square feet, and 2014, about 535,000 square feet. The five-year average is about 830,000 square feet. So based on a 3.9% vacancy period and the current supply of 2014 of 535, rental levels are going to grow. Uh, we're already seeing currently in the market one or two lettings of about 9, 10,000 square feet at the 120 pound mark levels, which is significantly higher than the 100, 105 that was achieved three, four years ago. So we are in the West End returning back to those 2006, 2007 rental levels. The schemes are much more of a higher grade A, which does reflect the increased rent, but even still on the key core areas within the West End, they are back at the 105, 110 levels. So, as a result of this large supply that is coming line in the city, but when we look at the West End, the reduced supply, one would think that we would get even higher rental growth in this. But when you factor in the service charges, the type of occupancy sizes that are going on, in particular in the West End, 
we would, we would estimate that the 105 will be growing to about the 110, the 120, and very prime kit over the next one, two, three years. In the city alone, there will be rental growth. At the, currently at about 55, it's going to grow to 62, 60. That is a result of the large schemes themselves, the rental levels they are demanding, but also as a result of the reduced supply that's going in place and also the low vacancy levels. One factor I would like to bring to a number of people's attention is that in the West End in particular, we're not getting the rental, or sorry, the lease terms that we used to get. The 25, the 20 year leases that were in the past are now being achieved with 10 year leases, with five year breaks, or a 15 year lease with a five year break. The 20 year, 25 year guaranteed income flow is much harder to be achieved. In the city, you're more inclined to get a new lease of 10, 15 years rather than the 25 years of years of pass. Um, but what is happening as a result of this, I suppose, reduced in vacancy rates, is that the power is starting to return to the landlord. Over the last two, three years, the power of negotiations went with the tenant. It is now moving towards the landlord over the next current period. So with these high rental levels, low vacancy, uh, very expensive market, why is London booming? Why was there 13 and a half billion done there? Why are we reading in the paper of all these Asian money, this international money coming in there. Well, London is seen as a very safe haven. Internationally, after New York, probably Singapore, London is, is a top financial center. With the English-speaking language, it is viewed as the center. I would view London as probably the most international market out in the world, which is reflected in its overall investment basis. Currently, 65% of all the stock in London is owned by international parties. Um, I believe that is the highest in any city in the entire world. And it also is a very liquid city. Um, you can do deals low as 5, 10, 15 million, going the whole way up to the city tower that traded only last week for 1.1, 1.2 billion pounds. Also, London itself is improving significantly its infrastructure. Crossrail is coming on board in 2018. There's extended amount of money being spent into the overground and the underground uses. The reduced in the reducing the cars coming into the city, plus on the bikes, it is making it a much more easier city to get around. So on the basis of this increased demand, either fortunately for us or unfortunately for the international buyer, we are starting to return back to these 2005, 2006 levels. The yields are moving in. Currently, we understand that in the West End, it's at about 4%. We have heard of a deal going on the market that will be done at 3.75%. That is back at the 2005, 2006 levels. There is increased demand. There is a number of deals been trying to be done off market. Sellers are reluctant to do off market deals as they know that there's such international market out there that are getting higher prices in there. And we forecast that of the 17 billion that was done in 2012, it'll probably raise to 2021 20, over the next coming period. So breaking down these international buyers, as we can see back in 07 and 08, it was mainly the Europeans who are currently in the market. This has moved now in 2012 and going forward where a lot of the money is coming from the Asia and the Pacific markets and also the North Americans. The reduction in Europe is A, as a result of the Irish being selling their stuff on behalf of NAMA or the Irish banks downsizing. And it's also a reduction as a result, sorry, of the Asian investors coming over who are very keen on the West End. They're very keen on certain areas of the city and they are paying top prices. Also, we're getting a lover of international Middle East guys who are clubbing together with the likes of AXA, international firms, and using them as a catalyst in order to acquire this London-based property. So in 2001, 2.91 billion, and of that, overseas were 2.24 billion. It is that London has now truly become an absolute overseas international market. It is the Germans are coming in, the North Americans, other Europeans. There is less and less deals being done by incumbent UK markets. If anything, they are more active sellers, or in most cases, they're actually developers. So moving into the yields, as you can see, that there was when things were great back in 2006, 2007, then as the financial market collapsed, yields went significantly out. There has been a significant decrease in this, and yields have come back in quite significantly. In the West End, we're not far off peak. As I mentioned, there is a deal being done at 3.75%. And then within the city, the, the prime yield is at five, maybe slightly below that. 
the one thing I would emphasize is that it is still very difficult to get your hands on deals, even though this may be where the yields levels are, in order to actually do a truly off-market deal or in order to get something very quickly, you are probably going to have to overpay in order to get this. And you'll probably have to overpay with using full cash. That is where the market is. Um, sellers know this. Correspondingly, buyers know this. And we are the view that based on the transactions being done and a number of, I suppose, international buyers who have not bought anything over the last six months, we forecast in Q4 that it's going to be a bit of a flurry as people try to justify their jobs and they would like to get one deal done. That will probably result in yields compressing a slightly bit more. So looking at a couple of these key investment deals, they are some of the larger ones, but putting in perspective, Ropemaker Place, that was AXA, but that was also done with an international buyer coming from Asia who linked in with it. Five Canada Square and Canary Wharf, again, St. Martin's, an international player in there. Woolgate, that was a result of a distressed debt seal. Ivanbrook Cambridge, the Canadians coming over and purchasing that. Aldermy Square, DECA, which is currently BNP's offices, they came in and bought that at a very juicy yield. Victoria Street was very aggressively chased. And even Gracechurch Street was done by Northwood, and they didn't even buy the full 100%. They bought a slight slice of that deal. So they are quite large transactions, but it just shows the international range of buyers who are coming into this market. So looking at the investment market, people are like in relation to retail. Bond Street, New Bond Street is still very popular. In particular, I think the Prada building was recently sold. It was chased by a number of Chinese individuals who are pushing the yields out there to sub than 3%. The Asians in the Chinese market love the high-end retail. They have um, a very passionate view on that. In addition to a number of the actual tenants themselves being owned by large conglomerates are actually buying their own buildings back. Rental levels are growing quite significant on grade A space over there. And in addition, we're noticing a lot more, I suppose, US or Asian clients coming over who are looking to enter into London and they are paying significant fit out. They're prepared to pay significant costs in order to get onto the best retail drag. That again is resulting in levels growing, international buyers looking at this stuff and are looking to take a Louis Vuitton or else the next Louis Vuitton future building. So looking at the IPD, it's not just London we're looking at, it is the rest of the UK. So central London is peaking. It's probably coming back on certain levels, but it is greatly higher than the rest of the UK. The rest of the UK is recovering. There is uh, regional markets that are still not doing very well, but the secondary cities are starting to increase in demand as international buyers and local buyers are heading out and trying to get kit. Moving into residential, which is always uh, something that's close to everybody's heart, uh, to buy an apartment in London is incredibly expensive. In particular in the West End, we're noticing huge Asian, Middle East who are coming over and are paying significant prices if you want to buy anything for a million pounds, you'd be hard pressed to find something in a decent location. I think over the last three to four years in certain of the core areas in London, you've seen close to 30, 40% growth just over the last five years alone. That is significant. It is the international buyers coming over. They view it as a pure safe haven. They're not looking for really yield. They're just looking to put money into sterling, buy it into these houses and do it there. And that is impacting on ability of truly international occupiers looking for the West End. The actual landlord is viewing this as potential. Should I go through resi conversion when I can sell it off 1,500, 2,000 a square foot rather than renting this out and getting 100 square foot? So the London is noticing that, that these buildings are being converted. They are converting them across, selling them to international Asian investors. And these Asian investors are coming in, buying this stuff just as a safe haven. So as a result of this significant demand, in, for product in London, the national market is starting to benefit from this. We're seeing more interest in the likes of Manchester, Birmingham, and over the last six months there has been significant yield compression in these cities. I would note that it's quite harder to get financing in these markets, but international buyers are moving in there because they can't physically get their hands on London-based product. Through certain regions, what I view is that the local parties are looking at there. There is growth in certain core cities. International buyers, in addition to local buyers, are looking at these cities and seeing that it makes sense. They're seeing the rental levels are starting to remain stagnant. They're either seeing occupiers who are looking to extend their leases. And the, the regional markets are starting to grow. So within this subsector of the regional markets, it, there is huge interest in the shopping centers. 
uh, not the out of town, but more something that's a convenience-based shopping center. Retail warehouses are increasing in demand, but the, the supermarkets is slightly low. These yields are under pressure, as in certain cities, the rental growth's not there. It's extensive asset management or it's shopping centers where certain tenants are leaving, you have to get new ones in. So on your blended yield basis, it does make it quite tough. But the core shopping centers that work for the average mom and pop to go out there and buy their clothes, buy their food, they are maintaining quite good value. Offices are improving, but they are still at generally historical levels, but they are starting to increase. Over the last two, three weeks, uh, we've been looking at two, three buildings on a national basis, and we've seen yields come in by 25, 30 bips just on three or four weeks of conversations, just because the seller himself believes that the market is starting to compress in. It is the London fringe moving out, and then also the secondary cities. Industrial is uh, still quite a tough market, uh, still the ability to build quite cheaply, the number of logistics markets that are, I suppose, tenants can move from one building to another, it makes a very asset management intensive business. Uh, we're not seeing a huge amount of deal volume going in there. It is an area of growth in relation to purchasing, but it is very asset management intensive at this stage. So looking in this, do we, do we believe, or does one believe, that there is value to be found in these regions? If the volume keeps on going in retail over the rest of 2013, the UK could match the 2012 levels. There were a number of large iconic deals done in 2012, but there is significant demand for these retail units off there. In the office market, it is international buyers linking in with local parties or else local parties looking at this stuff and doing extensive asset management work. There is a number of regearing opportunities, moving companies around within there, and there is value to be added and to create returns based on that way. I would emphasize it is the key UK regional cities that are most likely to see this. If you're going to tertiary markets, they're still very subdued at this stage. And again, it is still quite difficult to be getting financing at a 60% plus level in the secondary. Tertiary is incredibly difficult to get it. So then into alternative assets. Uh, we've been approached by a few Middle East and also a few Asian investors who are getting quite frustrated in relation to buying stuff in London. Uh, they don't really like the secondary assets or the secondary cities, or they don't believe they're getting deal volume. And what we're seeing is increased demand for the likes of medical centers, student accommodation, just based on the long income flow. We're also seeing US investors coming in here and trying to see if they can actually create a buy-to-let market on residential. There's a significant growth in the residential market, and a couple of the large developers are looking at doing what are called forward sales or forward block sales of a number of schemes around there. International investors are keen to buy this and create a build-to-let market. And even in recently the Prudential, one of the largest UK buyers of commercial, is now looking at moving into the housing stock and actually buying into the rental growth story associated with housing. So what we're noticing is that international buyers are looking at different asset classes because really as a result of A, they can't get their hands on grade A office or retail schemes, but also they're looking to try and chase return. Based on the, where the yields are at the moment, they're not getting the return level they want, so they're moving into more blended basis of alternative assets. So in relation to this, what we are starting to note is that there's more speculative schemes coming on board. One marble in place in WC1 is going to be a completely speculative office scheme. What we're noticing is that certain companies are viewing that Landsec and a lot of British land who built these large towers two, three years ago, as there is the rental growth story, as vacancy levels are low, people are actually taking more speculative approach in that in order to generate the returns that they want in the mid to high teens. The investor's appetite for prime retail is still looking to go. As I mentioned, a scheme in Sheffield where a year, two years ago, if you tried to present this to any international investor, they would not look at it. But currently now, Green Park have sold their 50% to Norges for a 5.1% yield on a 762 million pound building, and that is in Sheffield. No offense to anyone from Sheffield. So then moving into the, the residential schemes, Battersea Station itself now was sold by NAMA, and it was the Malaysian Consortium. And we're noticing significant demand around there at the moment. There's the Nine Mills residential scheme. Ballymore put their residential schemes out there. Currently, they, they plan to do 30, or sorry, 80 to 90,000 units will be coming on board there over the next five to 10 years. That coupled with the Crossrail area is going to significantly increase Battersea. And what we're noticing is that the core city locations, the Mayfair, the city are coming in line but more people are moving to the fringes. Shoreditch is stopping to come out together. Battersea is doing it. Landsec are putting a huge amount of money into Victoria. It is these secondary London-based areas are going to see significant growth over that. 
and that will then again factor into the regions. One George Square in Glasgow, for example, bought off six and, six and a quarter. Two years ago, you are probably buying something in London at six and a quarter. So just on a conclusion basis, uh, as I mentioned, London did 13 billion last year of the 177 billion pounds worldwide that was done. So for one city with 8 million people in there, it accounts for nearly 8 to 9% of the to total global deals done in commercial real estate. The market fundamentals are still in place. Supply is quite low, demand is increasing, there is a reduced vacancy rates, and correspondingly there is a rental growth story in there. A number of the large developments that are coming in line have significant pre-lets. A lot of the stuff for 2013 is over 50% let, and some of the kit for 2014 delivery is already at a plus 50% pre-let. The macro story in London is still very strong. The West End and certain areas and buildings in the city are probably back to the peak levels of 2005 on a pricing basis. I would note that the new leases that have been signed are not at the same 25 years they were done four, five, 10 years ago. They're now at a 10, 15 year lease basis with a five year break. The rental levels themselves are coming back to the peak levels. Certain buildings in the West End are above 105 at that level. And really why are international buyers very keen on London? I would say one, it is a wealth preservation play. If you stick your money into London, you may not see restricted returns in one, two, three years, but over a five, 10, 15 year basis, historically has shown you will actually either maintain your money or else ultimately grow your money. There are significant opportunities in London, and if I was to give any one piece of advice, it would be to look at a building where there is minor to medium asset management angles. That's where you're going to create significant value. So thank you very much.